Hello my friends! I'm Miss Heather and this is Padfoot and today we thought we would be nature scientists. So we were thinking about nature scientists and um, what they do and what they look like. So a nature scientist is called a zoologist if they study animals. Um, they're called a botanist if they study plants but today we're not going to study plants. We thought we would study animals. So we wanted to be zoologists. And in fact, we want to be herpetologists. That's a weird word, isn't it? Herpetologists study reptiles. So snakes and turtles and bearded dragons and that sort of thing. So today, Padfoot and I are going to dress as nature scientists or as botanists. No, um, no, zoologists, right? Zoo, like the zoo where you go see animals. Zoologists. Ology means the study of, so we're just studying animals. So the first thing we thought we needed was a hat, right? Zoologists probably wear hats, don't you think? Like they're in the safari, so we have a hat. Hat foot, we've got our hat here. Uh, the next thing we thought was, oh, they probably use protective eye gear so that they don't hurt their eyes. So, we got, well let me put my glasses off. <gasps> goggles! Let's look, half foot with goggles. Look at him, half foot. Oh, it's a good boy. You gotta make sure your eyes are safe, don't we? But I'm gonna put the goggles on. So, let's put goggles on. Mm -hmm. My goggles are on and I gotta put my hat back on. Okay, I'm starting to feel like a zoologist, I'm studying. I'm ready to study some animals. Oh wait, they probably wear aprons. I know a lot of people wear aprons when they do science experiments. I wonder if zoologists wear aprons. Well, I don't have the apron that they probably use, but I do have a cooking apron I could use. <gasps> Look, it has flamingos. That's the closest thing I have to an apron for a zoologist, so I'm gonna wear it. Okay, let's see. Here's my apron to protect my body when we're doing experiments and studying animals. Let me put it on. I gotta tie it. Sometimes it's tricky to tie. Sometimes I know that I ask other people to help me tie behind my back because it's hard to see, but today I'm gonna do it by myself. Okay, so I've got my hat, my goggles to keep my eyes safe, my apron to keep my body safe. What else do scientists tend to wear? <gasps> lab coats. Oh, I've seen scientists wear giant lab coats on their bodies and they're white and they have pockets, but I don't have a lab coat. What could I wear instead to pretend that I'm a scientist? Hmm. Well, Patfoot and I thought about a raincoat. So I brought my raincoat. It doesn't look exactly right, but it's close enough and I can still pretend that I'm a nature scientist. So I've got my lab coat and my apron and my safari hat because obviously safari hats are needed for zoologists who study animals and my eye goggles to keep me safe. Okay, Padfoot, do I look ready? Okay, no, no fist bump, nose bump. Okay, nose bump will do. So today we have a book and it's a non-fiction book. Which means that it's not a story, it's about real stuff. This is about real facts about science. And this one is Who Would Win? And I love this entire series. There's a whole series of these. So if you like this book, there's a lot of them that are like this. Who Would Win about all kinds of animals. But this one is versus Komodo Dragon versus King Cobra. Do you see? Whoa. So... Remember how we talked about if we were studying reptiles, which a king cobra is a reptile because it's a snake, and a Komodo dragon is a reptile, we would be called herpetologists. So today, Padfoot and I are gonna be herpetologists. And we're gonna study these guys. Mm. Who would win Komodo dragon versus king cobra? It's written by Jerry Pallotta. He's the author. He's the guy who wrote the words. He collected all the facts and put them in this book for us. And then it's illustrated by Rob Bolster. He's the guy who drew the pictures that look very sciencey, I must say. All right, let's go on our journey. 
What would happen if a tough King Komodo dragon came face to face with a deadly King Cobra? <gasps> what if they were both hungry? If they had a fight, who do you think would win? Look at this guy. That's the Komodo dragon. And there's the King Cobra. Who's going to win between that battle? I don't know. Let's find out about them and then maybe we can guess. So, meet the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon is the largest lizard in the world. It grows up to 10 feet long and can weigh 300 pounds. Oh my goodness, 10 feet long is bigger than me. That's almost twice my size. If you took me and you laid me two times in a row, end to end, it would be that long. We have a King Cobra, I'm um, sorry, a Komodo dragon in the Columbus Zoo. I've seen one in person. So that's the Komodo dragon. Meet the King Cobra. Dun, 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 the competitor. A King Cobra can grow up to 18 feet long. That's eight feet more than the Komodo dragon. 18 feet, that's crazy, Padfoot. Can you imagine? That's like if you took three and a half of me. If you put me to end to end three and a half times. Oh my goodness. The King Cobra is a venomous snake that can weigh up to 20 pounds. 20 pounds is like two milk jugs. If you took two milk jugs, gallon milk jugs, and you held them in one hand, that's how much a king cobra might weigh. Oh, venomous. What does venomous mean? It means that they have poison in their bodies, and when they bite you, they inject the poison in you. So they're venomous. No, thank you. Come over here. Padfoot and I have a surprise for you later, right underneath this blanket. Oh, my goodness. So a reptile, here, come sit, is a cold-blooded animal covered in scales. Turtles, snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and alligators are reptiles. A snake is a reptile that has no arms, legs, movable eyelids, or external ears. Hmm. There we go. So a snake doesn't have any legs, but I see that the Komodo dragon has four legs and a tail. <gasps> Whoa. I don't know if you can see because Padfoot might be in the way. Padfoot, are you hoping everyone will pay attention to your teeth? These are the teeth. Whoa. So Komodo dragons have teeth. Their teeth are unusual for a land animal. They are serrated like a shark's teeth. Serrated means jagged. So if you look, you might be able to see it right there. Serrated. See that jags? It also kind of looks, um, you know, if you've ever looked at your adult's knives for cooking, a butter knife, which you use to smear butter on bread, is not serrated it's smooth but a bread knife to cut the bread which is really only for adults to use unless your adult is helping you those are serrated you can look them at them with your eyes but don't touch them because they're dangerous they might hurt your um, body so king cobras have fangs <sighs> a fang is a long hollow tooth used to inject venom so the tooth isn't full of tooth material, it's hollow, it has a hole in it, you can see through it. And that's where the venom goes through when they bite you. Do you see? Now I know that king cobras also have other teeth, they have small teeth to help them eat, um, pull food into their bodies. But those are their big teeth. So deadly venom. There are only three known poisonous lizards, I would call them venomous litter lizards the Gila monster, the Mexican beaded lizard, and the Komodo dragon. In addition to venom, the Komodo dragon has dangerous bacteria in its mouth. <gasps> so its saliva has bacteria. Oh, goodness gracious. So a lizard is a reptile with two pairs of legs and a tail. Remember how we talked about the Komodo dragon has four legs, one, two, three, and then there's one back there, and a tail. So it must be a lizard. There's two pairs, a pair is two, so it tends to have four legs and a tail. A king cobra bite is deadly. A king cobra does not have the deadliest poison of all the snakes though, but it injects the most poison into your body. Its poison is a neurotoxin, which means it stops your body from moving. 
One king cobra bite has the strength to kill an elephant or 20 people. Wow. I never want to get bitten by a king cobra. How about you, Padfoot? Do you? He just wants belly rubs. Oh, look at their tongues. They have forked tongues. <laughs> so, my tongue is just one piece. Padfoot's tongue is the same. It's just one long piece. But a snake has a forked tongue. So they have one long piece and then it goes like this. And splits into two. A Komodo dragon also has a forked tongue. So the Komodo dragon has a forked tongue and it splits into two sides. A Komodo tongue is sensitive. When it flicks out its tongue, it can detect where a deer might be nearby. So it feels the vibrations of the deer or it can taste it or smell it. The King Cobra also has a forked tongue. Snakes have forked tongues. It smells with its tongue. Its tongue can also sense motion and temperature. <gasps> wow, their tongue does a lot more than my tongue does. My tongue can taste things or feel how rough they are, but their tongue can smell, sense motion, and feel the temperature. No, nope, if I stick my tongue out, I can't feel the temperature. Can you? Can you tell if it's hot or cold by your tongue? Nope. So what they do have is the forked tongue comes out, the two ends, and then it goes back into their mouth. And in the very back of their mouth, they have two organs. It's called a Jacob's organ. And it looks like two holes that they stick those two forks in. And the Jacob's organ is what helps them smell. It's really fascinating, actually. I really like snakes. We're going to skip that page. Okay. Komodo dragon skulls. This is the skull of a Komodo dragon. It's flat on top, like crocodiles and alligators. Oh. Well, look at that. So, a king cobra skull is right here. And it does not have much of a skull. Look. There's not much bone there, is there? Its brain is mostly unprotected. So the brain sits right here in a hole, but it doesn't have bone over top of it. Hmm. So it says the study of snakes is called serpentology. Oh, so a zoologist could be a serpentologist and study only snakes. King cobras do not chew their food. In addition to fangs, they have small upper and lower teeth to pull their food into their mouths. Do you see the little teeth right there? They swallow their prey whole. Their prey is the animal that they have hunted so that they can eat. So they swallow the animal whole. And it's actually really interesting to watch snakes eat because um, you can see the bubble of where the food was. And it just kind of gets compressed all the way down their body until they poop it out. Everything poops. Ooh, the favorite food of a Komodo dragon is small mammals. They also eat lizards and snakes. They kill by tearing their prey to shreds. Whoa. So the animals they hunt for food, they tear apart. Whereas we just learned snakes just swallow theirs whole, right? So snakes are the favorite food of king cobras. King cobras eat other snakes. Their scientific name actually means snake eater. Look at the skeletons of the Komodo dragon and the king cobra. What differences do you notice right away? Do you see? I see that the king Komodo dragon, I see the legs, four legs, remember, and a tail. But the snake doesn't have any legs. Hmm. And it really kind of just looks like it has a very long tail, but it doesn't. Here are all of its ribs, and then it has a tail. Ooh, look at when they're newly born. Just babies! So mother Komodo dragons lay about 25 eggs per clutch. A clutch is a group of eggs or a group of babies. Komodo dragon babies live in trees. I didn't know that. Can you imagine? They eat bugs, small lizards, rodents, and eggs. Hmm. Well, there they go. Look, they're hatching from an egg. Now, a king cobra 
is a baby right here, and a king cobra is the only snake that makes a nest. It looks a lot like a bird's nest. And then it lays its eggs there. As soon as they are born, baby king cobras have poisonous venom. Wow. There's their strange behavior. There's a, king, a Komodo dragon up in the tree. And when they're born, they have stripes. But that, those stripes disappear when they grow up. And here's more strange behavior. A king cobra can spread its rib bones. Our ribs are down here. But their ribs, remember, were all over their body. Can spread its rib bones and make itself appear larger. This behavior is called making a hood. A hood like the hood on my um, raincoat or my lab coat because I'm a scientist. So here they made a hood. They spread it out and it looks like a fan around their face. But here they have no hood and they use this to make themselves look bigger and scarier. The design on the back of the king cover's head is called its spectacle markings. Do you see the design? That's to make it look like it have, has eyes on the back of its head, too. Mm. The Komodo dragon walks around looking for food. If hungry, he would eat almost any animal, but he doesn't notice the king cobra hiding in the grass. The cobra has no interest in the Komodo dragon. Snakes like to eat things they can swallow whole, so the snake can't really swallow the Komodo dragon whole. The Komodo dragon is way too big. I also remember it told us the, uh, the King Cobra likes to eat other snakes. And the Komodo dragon isn't a snake, right? It has legs and a tail. That means it's not a snake. <gasps> the Komodo dragon wanders a bit too close. The Cobra raises its head, spreads its hood, and makes a growling sound. It is a warning to back off. The Cobra just wants to be left alone. The Komodo dragon circles around some more. Oh no, not only can the king cobra slither on the ground, it can also swim and climb trees. Look, their verses, who do you think is going to win based off of the information we have? If you make a guess on who's going to win, it's called a hypothesis. It's an educated guess. It means you know some stuff about it and you're going to guess what happened. So you're making a hypothesis. What's your hypothesis about who's going to win? The Komodo dragon or the King Cobra? Hmm. You think? Okay, let's see. The clumsy Komodo dragon steps on the cobra's eggs by accident. The cobra strikes fast, biting the leg of the intruder. As soon as the cobra's fangs sink into the Komodo dragon's leg, they unload their venom. Remember, they're hollow. They have holes for venom to go through. The Komodo dragon walks a few steps, then starts to breathe heavily. Its legs get wobbly and it can't get, and it starts to get dizzy. <coughs> Excuse me. And it falls. The King Cobra has killed the Komodo dragon with one deadly bite. Maybe next time the Komodo dragon will bite first. Whoa. <coughs> Excuse me. I did not think the King Cobra would beat the Komodo Dragon. I thought the Komodo Dragon was so big that it would kill the King Cobra. But if it bit the King Cobra first, it would have. So it really depends, I guess. And then who has the advantage? So who really is a better competitor? Who really would win? And it has our checklist. We learned about the size. We learned about the weight. We learned about the teeth, we learned about the venom, we learned about the skull, and we learned about the stealth. The stealth means where they can go and how they hunt. Well, there you go. So, Padfoot and I have a surprise for you. Remember, we talked about being herpetologists. So really, we're serpentologists, because we are talking about snakes. <laughs> so I remember it's called botany is the study of natural things no plants right oh, goodness gracious there's so many things zoology is the study of animals herpentology is the study of reptiles and serpentology is the study of snakes 
So we're going to be serpentologists. I'm glad I have my goggles on and my hat. Oh, I'm so ready to be sciencey. Okay, underneath this, are you ready to see? Do, do, do. Do, do, do. We brought our snake. Did you know that Padfoot and I have a snake? I'm going to get her out. She's underneath right now. Her name is Kringle Peppermint. And she's our snake. She lives with us. She's our pet. And she is considered a candy cane corn snake. And I'll show you why. Hi, Pep. It's just me. Here she is. See her? Do you see what color she is? There's her head and her forked tongue. I don't know if you see, she's smelling. Well, she stopped. She knows me, so she doesn't need to smell a lot. She is the color red and white. Although she kind of looks orange to me, to be honest. But that's why she's called a candy cane corn snake. Because she's striped red and she's striped white, like a candy cane. And she's a type of corn snake, which is not venomous. Miss Heather would not have a venomous snake. I don't want to hurt anybody. And she's pretty long now. We've had her since she was a baby. She's really used to being held. Kringle peppermint. She feels very smooth. A lot of people think snakes feel slimy, but she doesn't feel slimy at all. She actually feels cold because snakes are cold-blooded, which means they don't have a system in their body to keep them warm. So in her vivarium, her vivarium is where she lives in our house. It's kind of like an aquarium, but without water. So an aquarium is a big glass thing container, right, for your fish. And it has water in it and a lid so the fish don't like jump out. Well, Kringle Peppermint has a vivarium. So it doesn't have water. It has um, some fake plants and uh, tree limbs and a couple of hidey holes for her. And it has a heat lamp and a lid so she doesn't slither out. Viver means to live in Latin. Viver. And that's where the word vivarium comes from. Do you hear how they're similar? Viver, vivarium. It means a place to live. Just like viver means to live. So, here she is. She's very long. Do you see how long she is? She likes to be held. And her forked tongue is smelling things. She eats baby mice right now. So we have baby mice in our freezer, and then every once in a week, we bring out a baby mouse, and we thaw it, so it's not frozen anymore when she eats it, and she eats it, and she does exactly like that book told us. She opens her mouth really wide, and it's called unhinging her jaw. So she unhinges her jaw so it could go really wide, and she puts it over the baby mouse, and then she just keeps pulling it into her body, and then you can see the bubble of the mouse go down and down and down. So I think she's very smooth. She has scales and the scales on her belly are whiter and flatter than the scales on the top of her body. So the belly part of her is very, very smooth and even shiny, whereas the top of her is not as shiny. She has red eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to tell you about her. Oh, um, she's approximately two years old. And we just really like her. She hangs out with us sometimes. If you ever get a chance to hold a snake, I would suggest doing it because I think it's very calming. I really like the feel of her. Some people are afraid of snakes. They're afraid they will bite them. But a lot of snakes will not bite you. They don't really want to because they might get stuck. She's trying to go into my lab coat. See how she curls her tail around my wrist? She's trying to stabilize herself so that she can explore. So she hangs on here around my wrist so that she can explore safely. Just like when you're on a tree, climbing trees, and you might hold on with a hand or an arm. 
Or you might put your legs around the tree limb to hold on and then flip upside down. That's what she's doing, see? So that if she falls, she can still hold herself up and be safe. There she goes. All right, my friends. Thank you for being nature scientists with us. Thank you for being serpentologists with us. We really enjoyed hanging out with you today and learning about a Komodo dragon versus a king cobra. And I enjoyed sharing Kringle Peppermint with you. She's one of my favorites, I must say. I really like her. All right, remember my friends, we like you just the way you are. And we love you too. Oh no, I gotta move Pep so I can say goodbye to you. All right, here we go. Bye-bye.